up guys? My name is Steve Brayton. I'm here to give you three tips that could be absolutely game-changing for you if you're doing this program while doing back and buys. And then of course, I'm gonna share with you guys my weekly results, something that I've been doing every single week. Last week, it was my goal to get under 10%. I got under 10%. I got even better results this week. I'm excited to share that with you guys. Alright guys, so I'm actually kind of excited to talk to you about this one because I don't know about you guys, but back and buys is absolutely one of my favorite workouts. I say that a lot. I, lo I seriously love all these freaking workouts. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with legs, but uh, I think we can all agree with that because it is so intense, so fast-paced, but I love it. Um, and I'm always sore after every single workout. Which is good, so that's always a good thing. Means that it's working, right? I actually get kind of upset if I'm not sore the next day. I'm sure you guys can relate with that. Um, but anyways, yeah, so uh, back and backs. I'm gonna give you guys uh, four tips regarding this workout. Um, and then of course I'm gonna share with you guys my weekly results. The first thing I wanna talk to you guys about is the dumbbell pullover. Um, this move, I don't know if you guys can relate with this or not, I'm, ass I'm assuming you can, but during this move, I, when I first started this program, I never really felt like I was getting much from this move, okay? Um, and, you know, maybe some of you are, which is great, but if you say have limited equipment and you feel like you could do this move for like ever, you know? Uh, like meaning like you get to the 15 reps and you feel like you could just keep going You're not feeling the burn things like that. You should be feeling the burn immensely in your uh, right here You should be feeling it right there for sure So if you're not make sure that you try this out what I'm about to talk to you about um, Obviously during this program uh, they're doing or they're using dumbbells uh, and I have dumbbells up to 75 pounds, which seems like a lot. Um, but surprisingly, um, I've gotten to that point where 75 pound dumbbells, you know, really isn't cutting it for me. So what I've done is I've moved to a bar instead. Now you have to be uh, very careful, you know, if you're gonna do what I'm doing here. Um, I'm using a bar and I'm using no weights so you can kind of really see me. Cause if I had a big 45 pound plate on each side, you probably wouldn't be able to see me. So. Um, yeah, so here I'm just using a bar instead of uh, a dumbbell, you know, and now I'm able to get to failure because I have more than enough weight uh, to get to failure. Um, so if you're struggling during this move uh, to get to failure like I did, try using a bar. But again, be very careful while doing this move if you're going to use a bar because if you don't have a spotter or somebody behind you, if you fail, you know, it's not a good situation. And there's a lot of moves in this program where, you know, if you fail, if you don't have a spotter, it can be dangerous. So be very, very, very careful uh, if you are gonna do this move. Um, typically when I'm doing this move, I use a 45 pound plate on each side, uh, which is a lot more than just 75 pounds. So I'm able to get to failure pretty damn easy. So that is why I like to use the bar, preferably over the dumbbells during this particular move. Now, if you are, uh, still struggling or if you don't have a bar and plates or whatever and you only have dumbbells something else that you could do is make sure you really uh, do the full range of motion of course like I always kind of preach in all my videos um, 
But when you get to that last part of the mover, when you're having, you, when you have your arms all the way back behind your head, hold it there for like maybe a couple seconds and then explode up, you know? And then also something else to keep in mind that I feel like a lot of people do wrong is they're going up too far, you know, like, you know, picture me laying down, they go up to here, you know, uh, but you should have it slightly back right here. So every time you go up and you move, you should stop here, not here. Because if you stop here, you're gonna keep that tension on your lats. So that's what you want. So the range of motion is actually not that much, but you don't wanna go back too far either because you're gonna get injured if you do. Um, basically the rule of thumb is that as soon as it goes out of sight, that's when you know you've gone far enough back. You know, So you can just picture it and then as soon as you can't see it, uh, that's usually a good idea when to stop and then come back up. So again, if you're gonna go from using dumbbells to a bar during this move, um, start with a very light weight to get used to it first. I would not recommend going into it and just like, oh yeah, sweet, I can get to failure. Now I'm gonna just slap on the weight. Don't do that, uh, cause I did and I got hurt, so it's not cool. Uh, but yeah, anyways, don't do that. Start light, you know, get, to, get used to using the bar first, you know, but I wanted to bring up this uh, particular move because seriously guys, this move is absolutely important because you're not just working your lats, but you're also working uh, your, your abs and it's such a good full body upper workout, you have no idea. Like it's, it works a ton of shit. It works here, it works here. You know, your abs, I mean, I even feel it in my chest. You know, like it's just a really good and very important move. You wanna make sure that you're getting to failure during this move. Now, the second thing I wanna to talk to you about is uh, deadlifts. Deadlifts, sort of the same thing, you know? Um, deadlifts, I think we can all agree, you can lift a lot of fucking weight. So um, what I've done is I've actually moved to the bar on this move as well. Now, um, each uh, thing has its, its advantages when it comes to like dumbbells or using a bar. Dumbbells are nice, because you're able to bring the weight back to your side and really feel that squeeze when you bring it up, you know, every time. You can go like this, you know, every time. Now, when you're using a bar, you can still do that, but you're not able to really rotate your hands to get it really far back. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, you can really squeeze when you're using dumbbells, which I really like, you know? So um, sometimes I switch it up between the two, you know, just to get that extra squeeze. Uh, during my move and not to mention it adds just a little bit more muscle confusion, which is never a bad thing So if you've been doing the program for a very long time like me, this is like what my 28th round of body beast uh, You know, it's not a terrible thing for added muscle confusion, you know, um, so um, If you are using dumbbells again, this is very similar to that other topic that I just discussed with dumbbell pullover um, But if you're struggling to get to failure on uh, deadlifts huge red flag Huge red flag. You need to be getting to failure. Um, just like I had preached in all my other videos, if you're hitting your reps on every single move that you're doing, 8, 12, 15, you're not gonna see results, ever. I mean, you're doing something. I mean, you're, it's, you're doing something. Something is better than nothing, you know, ultimately, of course. But you have to get to failure. You have to make sure that when you are going for your reps, like say for an example, and I say this in all my videos, which is cool because it is very important. Now, when I say don't hit your reps, so like for an example, if you're going for eight reps, you know, and you only hit six, you pick the right weight, you know? Um, if you hit your reps and you hit eight or eight reps, you know, then it's time to go up and wait. The idea is to not hit your eight reps. Try to stay between six or seven or whatever, just a little bit below your the reps that you're supposed to do, and then you know that you picked up the right weight. Because if you hit your reps, uh, as I always preach too, keep going until you fail after you hit eight reps and then next time, make sure that you go up and wait. So if you, again, if you hit six reps or seven reps when you're going for eight, that means you pick the perfect weight. Keep using that weight until you get to your eight reps, then go up. Again, if you hit the eight reps, keep going. The idea is to hit failure on every single move. So that is why I'm bringing up deadlift because 
we can all uh, agree, I'm sure, that deadlift is a pretty important move, especially if you want a big back, strong back, def more definition, overall, lose weight. I mean, it's such an important move all around. So it's very important that you get to failure on this move, which again, can be very difficult because you can do so much weight. Uh, so what I've done is I've actually switched to the bar, the same bar that I showed you in my uh, dumbbell pullover move. I use that bar and I just slap on the weights like crazy. Something else that I would recommend using is uh, using a bar like this right here, where you have this, you know, part right here. So then the bar doesn't tend to want to like turn out of your fingers. You know what I'm saying? Because otherwise, if you have just a straight bar, um, you're going to have to grab it a little differently. One hand forward, one hand back, you know. So right hand's like this, the other hand's like this, you know. So it doesn't spin out of your hands. You know, that's why I like this bar because you don't have to worry about that because it locks the bar in place because obviously all the weight's right here. You know what I'm saying? So I use... I use that bar when I'm doing deadlifts every single time because when I use the dumbbells now, it's just not enough weight. Like I said, I only got 75 pound dumbbells and that equals out to obviously be 150 pounds. So um, deadlift, again, you can lift a lot of weight. So don't be shy, you know? Uh, when I worked out with my wife uh, in the past, you know, doing this program, um, she was super shocked on how much weight she could do. She was doing these little fucking 25 pound weights. And guess what? Actually, I think she, I think it was even less than that. I think she was doing literally 15 pounds, you know? She was going up with the 15 pounds, and then guess what happened two weeks later after she started working out with me? She had a 45 pound plate on each side uh, doing deadlifts. That is an insane, that's like, uh, I don't even know the math, I don't even wanna think about it, but it's like 70 pounds more, you know? And she did that in two weeks? No, of course not, she didn't gain that much muscle. Uh, she just wasn't uh, lifting enough weight. And that's because, you know, uh, deadlift, you know, you can lift a lot of weight. And it's shocking, you know. So uh, just don't be afraid to slap on the weight when it comes to deadlift. But again, like I say in everything uh, that I recommend that you guys try, be careful. You know, make sure that you are going into your move cautiously and thinking about what you're doing, what muscle you're working. Put your mind in that muscle. Uh, and make sure that it's engaged. You know, a lot of people kind of just kind of like fall into their moves, you know, and that's when injuries happen, you know. Take a moment, you know, just like I talked about in one of my last videos, I think, but get in the zone, you know, before each lift, you know, and really think about what muscle you're working and engage it, you know. Don't just fall into your moves because, again, that's when injuries happen. So when you're using the bar, again, don't be shy. Slap on that freaking weight and get to failure. It's extremely important. You can't have a big chest if you don't have a big back, right? Um, so that's all very important stuff. Now, the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is reverse fly. This is also a very common uh, move that people make mistakes on, you know? Um, they end up not leaning forward enough and they actually end up working their rear delts and not their back, you know? So it's very important that when you're doing this move that you're leaning over far enough into your move to where you're actually working your back and not your rear delts, you know? Because I, I see a lot of people, you know, they're like this, you know? Guess what? That's not, that's not working your back. You need to be down like this. You need to be pulling back like this, you know? So not like this, you know, that ain't doing shit. You know, that's working your real del rear delts. I mean, it is doing some, but it's not shoulder day, right? <laughs> so make sure that when you are leaning over, you're leaning over far enough when you're sitting down doing this move and you're pulling back. Just remember, back. You're working your back, so pull back. Not like this, you know, where you're working like your real delts, you know? Uh, so just make sure that when you're doing that move, Again, like I say in every, every tip that I'm giving you guys, make sure that you're doing proper form. Don't arc your back during this move. You will injure your back, okay? So keep your back straight, just like deadlift. Picture yourself going into a deadlift. What do you do? You don't arc your back. At least I hope not. Uh, but just make sure that when you're going down and you're, all these moves, you're not arcing your back, okay? Uh, very important because I've injured. I say that because... 
I've injured my back during this program so many times, you guys. So I talk about uh, how to avoid injury a ton on my team. And this is all stuff, by the way, you guys. This is nonstop. I talk about these tips in my group literally every day or as much as possible about anything and everything that I could possibly think of. I got a whole list lists of things that I talk about. This list is growing. There's so many things that I can talk about. But of course, you know, like I always say in my past videos, um, I'm only able to do one video a week with you guys just because I like to put most of my time into my team. So the tips that I'm giving you right now is like stuff that you could be getting every day if you wanted to be a part of my team. So that invitation, you guys, seriously is always there. Now, the next thing I like to talk about is curls. Um, curls, uh, you know, like a lot of people, they're, they're just swinging their arms too much. So um, I have a fix for you that could work to help you uh, really concentrate on getting your elbows to stay stationary. A lot of people, what they're doing is they're, you know, they're, they're not, like this seems like it would be right, right? You know, but really you should be oh, shoulders back and your elbows should be just slightly forward and you should be going like this, all the way down, stretch, and then up. Not like this, you know, like your arms are back like that. Like this is not, it's not, I mean, it's doing something, but it's not doing as much as you could. You know what I mean? So again, you know, shoulders back, arms just slightly forward, shoulders just right next to your side and keep those sons of bitches stationary, you know? Now, the tip that I have for you is if you're having issues or if you don't have a mirror, which again, I would recommend having a mirror because without a mirror, how the hell are you gonna know? You know, it's really hard to gauge what you're doing if you can't see yourself. So um, that's why it's very important to have a mirror. So this move right here is another alternative, something that you could do to make sure that you are keeping your elbows stationary, which is bringing your arms out slightly. You're doing like a wide bicep curl, basically. Um, I, I think there's a technical term out there for it, but um, you can see right here what I'm doing. I'm not going straight forward. I'm going out to the side just a little bit. And what that's doing is it's keeping your elbows stationary, which is what you want, right? So that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this video. Um, these things are absolutely game changing. And I'm gonna run through this one more time real quick, just to kind of like uh, run through everything I just said. So dumbbell pullover is the first thing that I said. You know, don't be shy to, you know, use a, a bar instead. Get to failure, extremely important. The second thing that I talked about was bar versus dumbbells that both had their advantages. But the biggest thing that you need to do is make sure that you get to failure, you know? So when you're doing deadlifts, you know, if you are having issues Getting to failure because you don't have enough weight, maybe it's time to either invest in some weights, which it's a one-time buy, you guys. You know, we make money for the things that we want, just that simple. So uh, for a one-night stay at a hotel, you could have a whole set of weights. Just saying, a nice hotel, like 300 bucks, you know, or something like that. Maybe even cheaper, but you guys get the idea. So we make money for the things that we want. It's just that simple. It's just, that's just the way it is, you know? Um, so that, that was number two, you know? So just make sure that you're, uh, Keeping the bar in mind, you know, with all these moves. Get creative a little bit, but safety first. Just make sure you're being safe. Uh, then the third thing I talked about was the reverse fly. Make sure that you're going forward enough in your move and actually working your back, not your rear delts, okay? Just remember, this is back day and you gotta lean forward in order to work your back. It's just that simple. And then curls, keep your elbows stationary. You know, keep them slightly. Maybe just a little bit forward and just keep them stationary. Make sure you're doing the full range of motion, you know? Um, but that's pretty much all I got for you guys as far as tips go. Uh, now it's time to talk about my results. I'm going to make this very brief because uh, this video is going to be a pretty long video already. So uh, here we go. So I did my percentage body fat last night and I'm pretty excited to tell you guys that I came in at 9.1% body fat. Pretty excited. You guys know I'm getting down to competition level results and also something else I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep my weight the same. So in other words, I'm trying to gain as much muscle as possible 
you know, while losing weight, while I'm getting competition shredded. Uh, and I'm, just, I'm excited to do this with you guys. I only got like uh, four, maybe five more percent to go to lose of body fat uh, to be to competition level results. So right now I'm at 9.1, so I'm gonna stand on the stool here so you guys can see me a little better. But this is where I'm at. Feeling pretty damn good, you guys. It's insane. I done. I did this in just a little over three months. If you guys remember where I was before, I mean that's insane. It's absolutely ridiculous. Most. I mean, <laughs> I'm pretty much. I, I, if I wasn't doing this whole competition thing, I mean, right now where I am as far as how shredded I am, I'm good. <laughs> but I'm gonna get competition shredded just because. It is kind of freaking awesome, you know, cause it's the kind of abs you have, uh, like you see like some guys, they just kind of stand there without flexing and whatever and their abs are just freaking there. And they're just, it's just, you don't even have to flex. It's pretty, it's pretty badass. Um, so I am looking forward to getting that shredded with you guys in the next, crazy to say, few weeks, but yeah, next few weeks I'll probably be there. So um, maybe not even. I'm going down about a percentage of body fat a week, which is insane. And uh, yeah, my team is loving it, you know, because again, I'm sharing a lot of this stuff that I'm doing um, with my team, you know, um, but it's also very important to keep in mind, you guys, you know, uh, that coming into this, it's all about consistency. And this is something that I preach to my team all the time. You will never see me skip a workout. You will never see me skip meal prep, you know, and it's just that simple. It's consistency. Am I perfect all the time, every single day? Do I screw up every once in a while? Yeah, of course, I'm human. Um, but for the most part, you know, uh, I'm always kicking it, killing it every single day. You know, no excuses. Life happens, shit happens. You know, I hear, I've heard all the excuses. Of course, with it being winter, you know, I got people even saying, you know, I had slammed with snow and I got to do this, you know, I got to do that, you know, and. Uh, I, I, I took, uh, I used uh, snow shoveling as my workout tonight. No, can't be doing that. Nope, that, does, that is not your workout. You have to stick to what is on the schedule. Commit to that shit. You know, that is what's gonna get you results. Do the gym first, everything else after that, that's just called life, you know? And a lot of people say too, is like stuff like, uh, you know, I, I just gotta deal with this right now. You know, I'm pretty busy. I'm not very motivated, you know, and all this, you know, and I'm just busy, you know. Um, but you got to remember, whatever it is that you got going on, whatever is making you busy or whatever, um, when that stops, guess what's going to happen after that? Something else is going to come up, you know. It's just life, you know. The, the moment you can accept that, that is when you're ready to get some game-changing results. I got some crazy SOBs in my team, you know, some of the, one guy, he got like three hours of sleep, but he still got in the gym because he's got that mindset now and guess what? He's getting results. You just got to have that mindset of like, no excuses, I'm getting in the gym and then life is after that. You know what I mean? It's like going to work, honestly, you know, you just, you go to work, you don't just come home from work early, you know, and just tell your boss you're leaving, you know, because you got to go take care of something. No. No, <laughs> I mean, unless you want to get fired, you know, but you get done at a certain time and then you deal with life, right? Your workouts should be very similar to that. You come home, you get in the gym, kind of like work and you, there's no, there's no questions. You know, it's your health. You know, you, you do that for your job, but you don't do it for your health. Isn't that kind of fucked up, right? You know, it, you should have your health still be as much of a priority as your freaking job, right? So why can't you do that with your workouts? Do your workout, then worry about life. Just like you go to work and then worry about life. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta start getting that mindset, you know, that it's just that simple. And you will never see results unless you can get to that mindset. And that is what I help drill into my guys' heads every single day with motivation, of course, you know, I get it. You know, when I first started out, I didn't have this mindset, you know, it didn't come to me naturally. I had to go through some shit. I had to fail over and over again, try to program quit, try to program quit, you know, like it happens. But that's why I introduced those phases inside my team too, because it allows people to come into my group and to really just kind of sit back and enjoy the ride. Because 
The, the goals that I have set up for the people that come into the group, there's such little steps and they're so easily uh, attainable, you know? There's no like, okay man, I want you to do like three workouts today, I want you to get meal prep done, you know, and it's, I know it's your first day and everything, but come on man, no excuses. No, that's not how that, that's not how I run my shit. You know, that's not how I help people. I set very small, little attainable goals each week until we get you to your goal, you know? I lay it all out. I think back of when I first started, you know, and thought about my struggles and what I needed to do to get to where I got over and over and over again, you know, and I just put it in phases, you know, something I talk a lot about a lot in these videos. Um, but uh, shit, guys, I mean, I can't believe it. Um, down to 9% pretty much, and uh, yeah, I'm excited as shit. I feel amazing. Um, and I'm just, I'm just jacked up, man. Summer's right around the corner. I know I'm gonna be shredded. I turn 35 uh, April 4th, and I'm gonna be shredded as a motherfucker by then. That's pretty awesome. I'm excited for that. So uh, it's pretty cool to say I'm gonna be 35 and just pff, in the best shape of my life. That's pretty badass. And you guys, seriously, I feel freaking amazing. Um, before all this started, I had shoulder issues. I had like, I don't even know. I had knee issues. Um, I, there was some other stuff, you know, obviously I can't even remember it all, but I just felt like shit, you know? Like nothing felt good to eat good either, you know? And I just felt, oh, whatever. You guys, you gotta understand, like when you get in shape and you do this, you know, and you really commit, you're gonna learn real quick that it's not just about results anymore. You're gonna start to appreciate the more, more you're gonna start to appreciate more on how you feel than how you look. It's just that simple. And I guess, I tell you what, if you just do it once and you just get in shape just one time, just one time, that is all you need to do. Because guess what? You're gonna remember how you felt and you're gonna know that you can do it and you're gonna get back. That's why I got in shape one time and that's why I'm able to do this shit over and over and over again with you guys. Because I just did it one time and I remembered how I got there. I remembered how I felt. I remembered the sacrifices and I just did it again, you know? So that's all you gotta do. You know, you just gotta want it. That's all it comes down to. If you guys are still making excuses to not getting started, it's just because you don't want it. Don't use life as an excuse because if you're gonna keep doing that, it's gonna be a vicious cycle, whatever it is that you got going on, when that's done, there's gonna be something else waiting for you, you know? You just gotta have that Fuck that attitude, like, I'm get, I'm doing this for me, you know? Get selfish, do that shit for you, you know? And uh, it, there's nothing that feels better than how I feel. It, it is worth every single sacrifice. I'm gonna stop talking now because this video is getting to be kind of long here. Look at that, 26 minutes. Um, but yeah, if you guys ever wanna join me, you know, in our team, it's pretty freaking badass. Uh, some guys in there are getting shredded. Uh, they're giving me a run for my money. I got a few guys that are like really uh, coming after me with uh, results, you know, uh, so it makes me feel like I gotta step up my game. I'm running the group, right? I'm supposed to be the big guy, you know, but it's probably not gonna happen. Uh, I got a few guys in there that are just animals, so, uh, which is awesome, you know, and it could be you, you know, so it just it comes down to, like I said, how bad you guys want it. So again, if you guys ever want to join our team, it's the motivation that you need. I, I would say that's probably the one thing that guys love the most about the group is just that team feel. It's amazing. Um, just having a group and just to be a part of something, you know, that is what people love the most. Aside from even the support, you know, and all the questions and everything that I do, you know, that's what people love the most. They just love being part of a team because they need that motivation, you know. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Till the next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Peace.